All right, you guys, this is our last learning goal of the um, unit, which means this is the last time we have to take notes for quite a while because the rest of it will be learning it, reviewing it, things like that. Um, so this learning goal is after conducting the experiment, you'll be able to critically analyze and graph the collected data and draw conclusions. So this is actually a pretty big learning goal because in this, we wanna understand not only how to collect data in a data table, but also how to make graphs, bar graphs, line graphs, and the end of our experiment, which is drawing conclusions. Um, so this learning goal, we will not finish today. It'll take us beyond today. We will work on this learning goal over the course of a couple of class periods. So in your notes on page 11, is where your notes are going to start and you're going to fill them out um, as I go along on the slides. So after you collect data, um, the best way to collect data, either qualitative or quantitative, is in a data table. You want to keep that data nice and organized. Scientists are collecting as much data as they possibly can, so they have to keep it organized so that they can find it when they need it. Um, and then after you collect it, you wanna analyze it. So you're gonna fill in the blanks in your notebook with the words that are underlined. Then you're gonna go ahead and put the definition for analysis. What does it mean to analyze something? An analysis is a detailed examination of collected data. So you are looking at it um, kind of with a new lens and trying to understand what the data is telling you. Qualitative data um, is where you describe in words what the data shows. So um, you would say the data is showing me that the number of plants in the area is increasing as the weather gets warmer or something like that. And then quantitative data, um, you create a graph to analyze your data. So if you collected quantitative data, you would wanna graph that information. And there's a couple different graphs you can do. You'll see pictures of both of them in your notebook. The first one, which we're gonna build today, is a bar graph. Um, and then the second one, which we'll practice next class period, is a line graph. So um, you can go ahead and fill in the blank with bar graph, line graph. We are going to, on the next video, we are going to fill this out on page 12 together. I think it's page 12, yeah. Page 12 together, this graph, and we're gonna build a bar graph together so we know how to make one. Um, so go ahead and flip to your notes onto page 14, and we'll finish up our notes with drawing conclusions. So, drawing conclusions. All of this kind of pops up at one time, but you can see where the definition is at the top in red, that's what goes here in conclusion. And then underneath are the questions and statements you would have in your conclusion are numbered, which are also numbered on the screen. So you know um, what to put in the blank with the word that's underlined. So your conclusion is the final summary of your experiment. A lot of times when scientists are reading um, scientific journals, they will skip to the conclusion to see what happened and to see if they are interested enough to actually read the whole scientific journal. Um, so things you want to include in your conclusion, this is like your summary, your end report of what happened in the experiment. You want to say if your hypothesis was wrong or right. You want to say what went wrong and didn't work. It's important to um, be transparent with the errors that you make in an experiment. You also want to explain what went well, what worked well in this experiment if someone is going to be repeating it. You want to, um, you would do you would say what you would do different next time. So if you were to do this experiment again, what things you might change. All of this information is going to be helpful if someone tries to repeat your experiment, which would ultimately be the goal. We want experiments to be repeated multiple times. Um, and the last thing you want to include in your conclusion is what would be a good follow-up experiment. So it's not just like your random next experiment what you want to do. A follow-up experiment is something related to what you just studied. Um, so for example, if you were looking at how the height of a ramp affects the distance a car travels down a ramp, a follow-up ex experiment might be the material of the ramp, whether it's carpet or tile or something like that. How does that affect it? So those are your notes for the last learning goal. Make sure you watch the second video to graph with me on page 12.